Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this one, but a lot of them, Mike, will be lowlights for yeah. Lafayette. Georgetown came to play today, and they did it right from the beginning, just spreading the football around. And we talked early. I mean, we couldn't set his name enough. Tomas, you're going to see again, out of the backfield, getting to the edge. They took advantage of Lafayette on the perimeter. A missed tackle here by Duran Gilbert gets Tomas into the end zone, the 7-0 lead. So they took seven minutes off the clock with that first drive. Lafayette then with a, a kind of a strange play, a fake punt, which gets Moultrie into the end zone. Lafayette finally comes alive, and it come alive with Malik Cam causing the fumble, picked up by Olivas. He's going to get it down inside the 20. A few plays later, Ashawn Davis with the strong arm to Elijah Stewart. He gets to the corner of the end zone. We got a 17-7 lead. Lafayette got the ball coming back out. And then Caracia, what a great job he did coming back to the football. Lafayette receivers have not created a lot of separation this year, but that gets it down inside the 10-yard line. A couple plays later, you get the big man to Jaden Sutton, who didn't play a lot today kind of odd going to cut that lead to 17 14 and then a big sack here by Samaj Cross so you thought Lafayette finally woke up and was coming to play but this play turned everything around number 27 that's Webner Cadet he's going to take it down inside the five and Moultrie didn't have to do a lot to get his two touchdowns today it was just kind of a couple plays he's in the end zone that made it a 10 point game and then this play was somewhat of a backbreaker there as Kibble is going to run by Dubois beautiful throw coming out of a timeout great throw the difference today was uh, was the quarterback Pierce Holly and a couple highlights for Lafayette Dallas Holmes the local product gets a big play right there Elijah Stewart again he's electric in the open field he's going to get this ball down inside the 10 yard line Lafayette's going to go for two after they punch it into the end zone you see him right here they're going to get it in the end zone on this throw to Dallas Holmes now this is the play I'm sorry to get the ball down inside the five and then watch the scramble by Monty to the left going to go back to his right a holding call, unhauled there. Dallas Holmes in the end zone. Lafayette goes for two, okay? And this is the shuffle pass that they're going to try to get the ball back underneath uh, inside. I guess I'm not sure if we have that one to Mason Gilbert. He doesn't get in the end zone. And Lafayette, a two-score game. But they were really not prepared and got surprised by a team that came here very hungry for a victory. Let's go down to Megan. She's going to talk, I'm sure, with a disappointed Coach Troxel. Thanks so much, Gary. Coach, you make the quarterback switch down the stretch. What energy did Rent Monty give your offense? Yeah, I mean, well, first, you know, today's Military Appreciation Day. So, one, thank you to everybody who served and is serving for us. And, uh, you know, we can't say thank you enough. But, uh, you know, making a switch was just about trying to create a spark, you know, and I think Rent going in there, uh, you know, created that little bit of spark and getting the guys going and, and moving the ball down the field and making some reads that, uh, that we needed to make. Your message to the team post game was, "We're not going to stop working." How much are you really stressing that to your team down the stretch? Oh, I mean, we're going to work every day. I mean, this is this is a young group. I mean, we're going to get a bunch of these guys back, and it's again, it's about culture and it's about creating that winning culture, you know. And so that means when we show up next week, we're going out to win. And and like I said, we're not going to stop working. We're in the boat with the kids. I said that to them, you know, our staff, and uh, they're, you know, we're not giving up on them, and they're not going to give up on us. Coach, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thanks so much, Gary. Well. Phil and John, the guys upstairs were just talking about how Lafayette wasn't able to stay on schedule today. What, what's your take with that, Phil? Oh, that's absolutely the case. You know, we had, you know, second and long, third and long all day long. Um, you know, we did come up with a couple big plays, you know, uh, mostly late in the game. Uh, but that's it. You know, yeah, Mike Joseph, you know, went over that in his, his uh, you know, thing earlier. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you got to stay on schedule, especially an offense like this. We don't have, like, a lot of big big playability per se um, you got to be in those second and second and shortish third and shortish yardages to be able to maintain drives what's your biggest takeaway John from this game to, to try to build off of well, you know I, I want to believe it, it's a lesson learned because yeah. we said this last week after the emotional game that we played against uh, Hol Holy Cross and we played so well it did everything but win the game you know coming into this game you know was there to be an emotional letdown? You know, yeah. we, we played so well. The energy was high, and it was the exact opposite. And what yeah. we do, and Phil, you know this. Or you, we're not in that locker room. You've been in that locker room before. Yeah. You know, folks like us, we analyze and we hypothesize and we overreact, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. If you're John, and you can share with us, Megan, obviously you talked to him after the game. If you're John Troxel, you, you got to stay calm. You got to stay focused. You got to keep things in perspective, and they've got to figure out a way to rebound from this football game. Well, it's really interesting to your point, John. After the game, Coach Troxel was talking to his team, and he said there was not a lot of emotion yeah. today. So I'm curious, Phil, for, from your standpoint, from, from a player's standpoint, 
what are the players, what are those conversations now in, in the locker room? Yeah, well, you got to, you know, you got to rely on those seniors, uh, the mm -hmm. captains, to really rally the troops, you know, get back on track. Um, you know, you got, you have three more games. Uh, yeah. You have the Lafayette Lehigh game, you know, to play. And for a lot of these guys, it's the first true, you know, Lafayette Lehigh game at home uh, to, to, you know, have that experience. And that's mm -hmm. what you got to, you know, you got to rally, rally them up for. How hard is it, though, to, to rally when your next two games are on the road? Yeah, I, I don't know that it's that tough. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, yeah, it definitely is a way. But um, you know, one one game at a time. You know, you you look at the tape, uh, and you just will be able to come back and and rally yourself for that for that game. When they look at the tape, they will see some good tape from Rent Monty. What spark did he really provide? That little energy coming down the stretch. Well, just a change of pace. You know, yeah. you try it. It's just like rolling the windows down. Uh, Lafayette today was in such a funk, especially offensively. But I want to go back to the Georgetown game plan. Mm. You know, if this, if Georgetown had come out and 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 had they had done what they did with a run game, we would have said it was a dominant performance. Right. They just pounded, pounded, pounded. But they didn't. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. In this case, skin a leopard, <laughs> and that is short passing game, three and four yards. Phil made the point uh, in our halftime segment uh, that they really didn't have many over-the-top plays, mm -hmm. but they controlled the pace of the game with that quick game, the quick passing game that basically dominated and 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 uh, controlled the time of possession. And yeah. they kept them on schedule, right? Exactly. You know, exactly. They're, they, they're with second and short, third and short, uh, you know, mounting those drives. Yeah. Mm. What's the biggest learning from this game? I think that, you know, you have to be, you know, you got to be up for the game. You know, yeah. again, I was searching for words for that in that first half. I think you had it right on, uninspired. You know, we were you we were commenting like the, the sidelines. There was no, you know, uh, not a lot of guys rallying for the for the for the game, for the for the troops uh, when we were still in this game. Yeah. Um, got to get up for it. Uh, three more games. Defensively. You know the defense did their did their part. I thought when uh, uh, when they forced the sack and the fumble and we got our first touchdown off of that, I thought that might be the spark. But that goes to what we were talking about before. You're looking for that one big play that can light a fire. You know th there was not a fire to be lit today because if that play didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. John Troxel's first year. There's going to be growing pains. Of growing pains means you know ups and downs. You're going to have bumps in the road. I think last week uh, there's no question about what kind of football game that was. Yeah. And we kind of lose perspective on, on where we are in that growth, uh, in, in, in that growth the pattern. Uh, John Troxel stays calm when everybody around him is losing their heads. But you're talking about last week. You know, you can also take that as a positive. You know, we can play this way. You know, mm -hmm. we can take holy. You know, uh, number six team in the nation and play well and should have won the game. So uh, you can look back on that as a positive as well. A lot of growing still to be done, and still three more games. Three more games in the season. The next two on the road, but we will be back with you for Lehigh Lafayette, which will be a blast as always with that rivalry game from Phil Ang, John Leon, and Megan Caffrey. We cannot wait to see you again in two weeks.